Hello, welcome back to AWS Solution Architect Associate. So today we'll be going through Module 8 Challenge Lab, which is controlling AWS account access by using IAM. So let's see what we have to do. Like we'll be having an app developer group. So in that app developer group, we'll be adding Nickel user, which will have access to AWS Cloud9, Amazon EC2, and we'll be adding DB administrator user group and inside and inside this user group will be adding Olivia. So Olivia will be having access to Amazon RDS and Amazon System Manager. Okay. So this is how currently our architecture looked like. So we have inside a public subnet we have two multiple EC2, a dev instance and a prod instance, and each of the instance are connecting to the same database, RDS database, and we are sharing the credential using this parameter stuff. And currently we are having only single cafe role which is attached to the EC2 instance and the user is uh, uh, Sophia okay so at the end of this lab we'll be creating multiple users inside a different user group so app developer user group will have initial in it and it will have attached some certain IAM policies and inside this DB administrator IAM group will have Olivia in it and uh, will attach certain IAM policies in it and will be giving certain certain permission to these multiple user groups so let's start the lab so let's let's start with task one so like configuring an IAM group with policies and IAM user okay so in the console open IAM service page let's go to IAM service and create an IAM group named app developer and attach the following IAM policies to it so as you can currently see, we don't have any user group, neither we have any user. Let's, so let's create a user group. So the first user group name should be app developer. And we need to give certain app permission to it. So it should be Amazon EC2 read only access. Amazon read only access. And then Amazon Cloud9 environment member. Remember this environment member. So let's create the group. So we have created a new group with, and this user group, I am user group has multiple permissions, which is Amazon EC2 read only access and AWS Cloud9 environment member. So let's continue. So now we need to create an IAM user and add user to the app developer group. So username should be Nikhil. User, add user, username Nikhil. And AWS access type would be AWS management console access. So this should be this one, custom password, and let's copy this password. So we'll be needing this password later on. So this is not required. And we need to add Nikhil to the app developers group. And let's add Nikhil to app developers group. And let's go to next and let's say create user. So now we have created a user and this is the URL console URL for this user and this is the password for this user okay so while still logged in as vocab user connect to the AWS cloud and ID and set up the cafe web application so we need to open AWS cloud and service page and under dev server cafe server choose open ID so we need to open this dev server cafe in cloud9 so let's go to cloud9 cloud9 let's open this new tab let's go here so we have this dev cafe server and let's open this in IDE and let's follow along so in the best terminal window at the bottom of the screen paste and run these three commands okay this will download this uh, script file this will change the script file to execut executable file and then it will run this script so let's copy paste so we're in the environment let's paste let's press enter okay so now we have downloaded we have changed the file to executable and then we've executed the script okay that sounds good so till that is going on let's go let's continue with point number nine so we need to share the AWS cloud environment with Nikhil user okay so in the top right corner of the AWS Cloud9 ID, choose share 
in the shared environment panel under invite member enter nikhil and choose invite so let's go here it should be here let's share let's invite member nikhil invite okay so we have added the user in this environment so let's copy this cloud nine url so that we will need later on okay and then let's continue with task two so now task two we need to log in as nikhil and test the access so for this we need to do in the uh, private window or in, in in an incognito window okay so let's go to incognito so i've opened an incognito browser so now let's copy this console sign in url of nikhil okay and let's try to log in here using nikhil Nikhil, the password should be at the rate app developer 20 and sign in. So, as you can see, we have logged in using this Nikhil user. Let's make it full screen so that it will be easier to switch. Let's continue. Choose the segregation tab, and I've already done this. The password is this. So, I've op so now I need to open Amazon EC2 console in the browser tab and load Cafe Web application. So let's go to EC2. So we are currently in North Virginia region, so it's okay. That's fine. Let's go to instances. So now we have multi, uh, two instances which are currently running. Uh, let's copy the IPv4 public address of this AWS Cloud9 Dev, serv Dev Cafe server. AWS Cloud9 Dev. Okay, so this is the IP, and let's say Cafe. So we should be able to open the cafe application okay so we're able to see the cafe browser cafe website keep this browser tab open for later in lab okay so let's go to point number 12 so test your amazon ec2 access folder by attempting to restart the web server try to reboot the instance okay so let's try to reboot this instance we can do by going here instance state and reboot instance and reboot okay so we fail we are we are not able to reboot the instance because we are not authorized to perform this operation okay so let's continue so we need to answer a few questions so to do that let's go to detail let's go to show and let's access the multiple choice question until then we can close this tab so what happened when Nikhil tried to reboot the instance? So an error indicated that we are not authorized to perform this operation, right? And question number two, which IAM policy allowed Nikhil to access the AWS Cloud9 environment? It's, it was because of the AWS Cloud9 environment member. So I I've, I told you to point uh, note this previously, okay? So let's continue with further steps. So return to the browser tab where we are logged in as AWS Management Console as Nikhil and so you can always see like uh, by which user you logged in because you can see uh, this is vocab labs and this is nikhil so if i turn off the full screen so you can see uh, this is nikhil okay so this way you can identify uh, which user is currently logged in so let's go to full screen again so let's continue Browse to the AWS Cloud9 console and connect to the AWS Cloud9 ID of the Dev Server Cafe. So I tried this multiple times, so we are not able to directly open this from the Cloud9 environment. So I can show you this. So if you go to Cloud9, we won't see any Cloud9 environments here. So not sure why is that. So you see, we don't have any environment here. So, but we can go to this environment then by going by so we can copy this url and we can paste it here so by this we can access the ide why can we access because we have shared this ide environment with nikhil so if you see so we're able to log in to this environment using nikhil so you can confirm the user so i'll turn off the full screen you can see this i'm currently nikhil and here I'm also on the kill. Okay, you can see. 
so I'm in the kill okay so let me turn to full screen so this will be able easy to easy for me to switch so let's continue with point number 17 so it's asking me to modify line number 13 so that it reads this okay let's copy this line and we need to edit the file inside dev cafe server www html cafe and index.php www html cafe and index.php uh, line number 13 so i've pasted this so now we're able to like uh, what we have done is uh, uh, it was only cafe but now i've also added this dev site let's go to file and let's save this so we have saved the changes and the browser refresh there now i need to refresh this browser so currently you can see we have cafe okay so now if i refresh this it should be cafe dev site so by this we can say that a nickel user is able to have the cloud 9 management uh, cloud 9 console access so test the connectivity of our application database so like for this we need to go to cafe website and choose menu so let's go to let's go to menu Hmm. So it says that we don't have the root access, like access denied for user using password. Okay. So why is that? Let's go to number 19. Return to the browser tab with multiple choice question for this lab and answer the following question. So let's answer question number three. Which message was displayed on menu page of the cafe app website, cafe website development instance? So it says connection failed, access denied for user root. Sounds good. Let's continue. So, as Nikhil opens the system manager parameter store in the console, open the system manager service. So, let's go to system manager. Let's go to system manager. And let's go to parameter store. Hmm. But we don't have access for this Nikhil user, right? Because we only gave access to EC2 and Cloud9. AWS Cloud 9 access, right? So for this, we need to answer question number four. So which message was displayed when Nikhil opened the System Manager Parameter Store page in console? So we are not like we get this describe parameter action, right? So user Nikhil is not authorized to perform SSS describe parameter. So let's continue. We have completed 21. Let's go to 22. Yes, Nikhil. Verify that the production cafe web application is working correctly. Let's go to EC2 instances and let's go to prod cafe server. Let's copy this and then let's copy the IPv4 address and let's add cafe. Okay, we're able to run the site successfully. Let's go to menu. Okay, the menu is also uh, being listed. And let's copy like uh, let's try to place an order uh, let's submit the order okay so the production server is successfully running so uh, this uh, all the flows in this is sounds good but in the development server like we're not able to access the database so let's go to challenge number two so here where we'll be configuring AWS account access for database administrator so like uh, we are having certain limitations in this nickel user so Nikhil reports the result of this to Sophia and Sophia glad to know that like the production side is still running. So now so Sophia decides that she will ask Olivia to fix the issue. Let's continue with task three. So we need to configure IAM for database administrator user access. So in this task, we'll ask Sophia to enable AWS access for Olivia. So back in the browser where we are logged in as vocab labs, create an IAM group in the name this one. So let's go and create a IAM lab return to user list user groups create group so group name should be db administrator and the user group will have this access multiple access it will have the rds read only access and amazon ssm full access so rds amazon rds read only access and then amazon ssm full access Okay, so let's create the group. So now if we refresh, so we'll see that we have inside this app developers, we have one user, but inside this DB administrator, we don't have 
any user so let's continue let's create an IAM user that names Olivia with the access to the Amazon AWS management console okay so it's very easy to do this let's go to add user username should be this one management console custom password let's copy the password from here custom password so let's uncheck this let's check next and you can see that we need to add Olivia to the DB administrator group so let's add to DB administrator group and let's say next and let's create the user so now we have created a new user Olivia and this Olivia is added to the DB administrator group so task for logging in as the database administrator and resolving the database connectivity issue so in this task your work will work as Olivia to resolve database issue that Nikhil identified will also work as Sophia to help Olivia re uh, resolve some issue so as Olivia log into the AWS management console uh, to do this I will copy this and I'll go here so I'll say Nikhil and I'll say sign out okay so I'll say log back in so I'll directly paste the URL here because I have the application ID here so that's that would be more simpler for me and as we remember these are the credential we set for Olivia so let's sign in using that Olivia so this is the password so now I'll show you like we are currently logged in as Olivia so verify that you can see here we have Olivia here in this panel okay so let's do full screen again and let's continue so for this let's open Amazon RDS like we need to verify if the RDS database is running let's go to RDS or we can directly go from here and we need to choose databases so let's go to databases so we have this database so which is currently available and I believe that's running okay so since this uh, status is available we can confirm that the database is available so we can observe that the database is running and she recalls the development environment connects to database by using parameters uh, parameters that are stored in the system manager uh, parameter store Olivia wonders if the dev cafe server EC2 instance has permission to read the parameter out of the parameter store so let's go to Amazon EC2 and let's say instances but here like uh, we don't have any permission to uh, see the instances right so we need to return to the browser tab with the multiple choice question in this lab and answer let's uh, like let's answer this question number five why can't Olivia access the EC2 instances details so we don't have any permission uh, like any EC2 permission right because when we create the uh, DB administrator user we just added only RDS read only access and SSM full access so so that's the reason we're not able to access the EC2 instances okay so let's re return to browser tab where you logged in as vocab user Sophia so let's open the DB administrator group and attach these policies so let's go to okay continue let's go to user group let's go to DB administrators let's go to permission and let's go to attach policies so here we can add these two policies let's add this and also let's add this so let's add that multiple permission so now we can see that we have four permissions in this DB administrator user group so still as vocab voc labs user check the services and feature Olivia used so in the IAM console open the Olivia user and choose the access advisor so let's go to access advisor because I'm currently in DB administrator so here we'll see like a uh, last access thing but since it's only the for last four hours 
So notice that you can see which services areas that Olivia visited. Recent service activity usually appears with four hours. So you might not see any last exit data for Olivia yet. So let's continue with point number three, 33. As Olivia returned to the browser tab where Olivia user is logged in and refresh the instance page and the Amazon EC2 console. So Olivia should be able to access both EC2 instances. So let's refresh. So you can see we are able to access both the instances. Select the AWS Garden Dev, Dev Cafe server. Let's select this. So in the detail tab, find IAM role. So we have this IAM role and it's attached to this cafe role. And let's choose cafe role. So in the permission tab, expand the Amazon SSM managed instance core policy to see the permission detail in JSON. Okay. So let's choose this and let's choose JSON. So here we're able to see like what action this, uh, what we call S allow SSM managed instance core policy is able to do. So it has multiple actions like it can have all these EC2 thing, you can have this SSM thing, and it can have this multiple SSM thing. Okay, so let's continue. So let's go to question number six. So name two specific action in the policy that allow cafe web application on this instance to access the database credential. So it is list parameter and list parameter. So let's continue. So after some conversation, Sophia remembers that the development environment previously used the local database but uses Amazon RDS. So the local database had a different username that allowed the web application to connect to the database. Connecting to the database of an AWS RDS require a different database user name. That must be issue. So as Olivia, let's update the DB user value in System Manager Parameter Store. Okay. So let's go to System Parameter Store here. System Manager. So once we open this System Manager, we can go to this Parameter Store. And let's go to DB user. So you can see here we have this value as root. So for this, I think we should have user for prod. Let's go to prod DB user. Okay. So we can confirm that we are having this admin user because the both EC2 instances are pointing to the same database. So let's go to parameter store. Let's go to DB user. Let's say edit. And now let's update this root to admin and let's save changes. Okay. Sounds good. So in the web application, the web cafe server, refresh the menu page in this website. If this website isn't already open, so we, are all, we have already opened this. So this is the development site. So if I refresh now, I should be able to list, like get the list of all the menus. Also, let's try to place some orders. So currently, after doing all this hard work, I'm a bit hungry and I want to have a couple of donuts. Okay. And let's submit order. Nice. So we're able to place an order. Congratulations, you acted as a member of DB Atmosphere Group and you fixed the website. Nikhil thanks Olivia for resolving the issue. Olivia also informed Sophia that the issue is resolved. Nice. So we have this new requirement, refining IAM user access. Okay. So using the IAM policy simulator and creating a custom IAM policy with the visual editor. So return to the browser window where you are logged in as vocab user and load this URL in the browser tab. So so I'm currently in the vocab lab, vocab voc labs user. So let's open this in new tab. So I need to choose the Olivia user. So until it's opening, let's continue this. So in the IAM policies list, make sure that the IAM read only access policy is selected. However, clear the checkboxes of the other policies. Okay. So let's go to Olivia. So it's asking me to select only IAM read only access. So let's uncheck this. Let's uncheck this and let's select this. Okay, so in the policy simulator section, choose select service. So let's say select service, and here I need to enter ident identity, identity and access management. And here, let's choose few actions. 
and select identity and access management and we need to choose the select all option and run simulation so let's select all and let's run the simulation so here we can see that like with like we have so many services and you can see from this list what all services we are ex uh, like uh, giving the permission like you can see it's denied and what all permission we are giving the permission like allowed okay so so we have this denied denied allow allowed Sophia recalls the only reason that she granted Olivia the IM read only access policy permission she wanted to grant Olivia the permission to observe detail on the certain policies these policies are attached to the IM role that's attached to two cafe server instance. Sophia decides to, to author a new more restrictive IM policy for members of DB administrator group. And inside this IM console, let's go to policies. So we have these policies and Sophia wants us to create a new policy. Okay. And let's say create policy. So in the visual editor tab, configure the following settings. Select, choose a service and search for and choose EC2. So since we have completed this multiple choice question, I'm closing this. Also, we have already checked this. I'm also closing this. Okay. So here, let's choose a service EC2. In the action search box, search for IAM and select. So let's search for IAM and select describe describe IAM instance profile association. So we don't okay yeah so it's here describe IAM instance profile association. So at the bottom of the screen choose add additional permissions. So let's go here add more permission. So since this is done, I will do that and let's select a service here. So I think we need to choose a service and search for choose IAM. So we have this IAM here. Let's choose this. And inside this action allowed, let's have all these actions. Get policy version. Get policy version. Get role. Get role. Get role policy. So it's easier to search this way rather than go and search a single single policies get instance profile okay and back in the search box search for list and select the following action okay so rather than that let's, let's just search this so it's simpler list list instance profile list instance profile roles I think it's taking a bit of time so but it's okay list policies list role policies and list roles let's choose this so I've chosen multiple uh, roles okay profiles so expand the resources section and for all the resource, three resources types, instance profile, policy and role, select any in this account. So let me close this and here I need to choose for role any, any and any. Okay. So, so back in the top of the screen, choose the JSON tab. Let's go to JSON tab. Okay, it's here. So now like whatever policy we have added there. So we're able to see what all policies we have created okay so we have multiple policies we have we have chosen two policies so one of them is will be allowing to list policies the ec2 for the ec2 and the, for the im user okay and in the second policy we'll be able to get uh for the im user we'll be able to get raw list access profile role get policy version etc for which resources for these three resources correct okay so unfortunately in this lab environment we can't grant the permission to create an IAM policy you will get a permission error like let's if we say next and let's create a policy though we'll, we should be getting okay let's say test 
and let's create a policy we should be uh, getting some error like we, we don't have the create policy action okay it's okay so let's exit this by doing cancel leave so in the policy search box search for limited IM policy we have this limited IM policy so let's choose this and let's choose JSON so from here we can see that whatever we were adding that time in the last in that uh, while we are creating the policy so the same we can view this one okay so we have IM is it two IM so it is the same thing so we're trying to create the same policy so it's okay that like uh, if you don't even if you don't have access we know what exactly we have done last time so observe the policy detail match the one you worked to build as shown in the previous sc screen capture nice so now we need to go and edit the DB administrator IM group. Let's go to user group. Let's go to DB administrator. And we need to attach the limited IM policy and remove the IM read only access. Okay. So let's go to permission. So Sophia want us to remove this. Let's remove. And let's add a new permission. Let's attach policy. And we need to attach this limited IM policy. Let's go to this and let's add permission okay so now you can see we have this we have attached this limited IM policy and with other Amazon EC2 read only access etc so turn to browser tab where we logged in Olivia and verify that you can still access the detail of cafe role so let's go to this one let's go to here and let's go to cafe role So I'm, I'm still able to see the cafe role. Okay, so I'm inside the cafe role. So in the permission tab, expand the Amazon SSM manage instance core policy. I can expand. So I'm still able to see the policy in detail. Okay, so point number 49 is optional. So we have already gone to this IAM policy simulator. So I think we can skip this. So with this, we have completed the challenge lab. So I've submitted this, okay. And then we can see that we have scored 30 out of 30. And so far we're doing a good job. And also congratulations, you have been with me till until this module eight. So we still have few four or five modules to solve. Let's come together and let's solve the problems. So till then see you in another lab.